Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And it's Jeremy from Tested. And for today's show and tell, well, Jeremy is here to talk about breaking your toys and then hacking them. The best way to treat a toy. Ooh. At this year's live show, one of the contributions you made was for a Bob X segment. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to illustrate the difficulties of controlling a robot on Mars mm -hmm. with a robot on the stage. Yes. So Bobek works at the JPL. Yep. And he contributes towards the whole Mars program where they're actually sending commands to rovers. And so he has first person experience with that. And uh, so the challenge we brought to you was how do you uh, simulate a delay, a right. time delay of sending a command to your robot? So you can tell the robot to go forward, backward, left, or right with a controller, but actually have latency. Right. Something you don't want in a real toy. Right, <laughs> yeah, they certainly don't make a toy that does that. Yeah. Uh, so a Will actually came to me and he said, uh, we need a toy that will go up on stage and kind of illustrate that. But the instructions were kind of loose. Um, but he did say that he had a tractor in mind, and so this is it. This is a excavator. Nice. Um, that I'm pretty sure uh, came straight from China because these were the instructions. Is this Chinese? Is That's Chinese. Chinese. Yeah. Um, so the whole box and everything was just in Chinese, um, which that was okay, except the, the control is pretty complicated. It has about 15 different switches on it that do all different movements, all, articulates the claw in all different ways. Um, so that actually posed a problem on down the line, but um, my, my, there could have been many approaches to making an Arduino or some kind of microcontroller control an excavator. Uh, do we want to like send our own radio frequencies? Do we want to replace the remote entirely? Mm -hmm. Do we want to put something into the tractor that would receive the commands and then sort of digest them and then send them out later? I thought the easiest th approach would have been just to hack into the remote itself and control these buttons with an Arduino, so that the tractor doesn't even know that I'm interfering. It's just something else pressing these buttons on the controller for me. Interesting, and so you took, I assume you took the uh, things apart and looked at the radios. Yeah. You didn't want to mess with what already worked, Like you had a specific goal in mind. Right. Uh, what's inside this tractor and the remote? Well, the, this is actually a 2.4 gigahertz um, radio. So it's not. I don't think. I don't think it's a typical RF signal, like for a radio-controlled car or something like that. So I. I mean, that wasn't even an option. I couldn't. I don't have any uh, equipment to listen to that or you know, um, interpret that and resend it. So um, I opened it up. There, and I'll, I'll open it up right now and can show you. But first, I thought it would be a good idea just to show you how it works before we actually destroy it. Um, so that's an annoying sound. <laughs> um, but basically, the remote works you know, normal. Uh, yeah. It doesn't know that anything's attached to it. But um, using this Arduino setup, we have a, a Teensy LC, which is the microcontroller, set up to, I don't know, like 15 buttons on here. And then uh, a display over here, which is our timer. It's set up to a, a potentiometer that I can rotate over here to um, control how many seconds the delay is. I learned that the a, a signal to Mars takes between th like three and twenty-three minutes. Mm -hmm. Might be off by a minute or two, but depending on where the orbits are of the planets. Yeah, so it's a, it's a little longer than that. No, 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 no. Only that, three minutes? Yeah, if if they're close together, ah, if okay. the orbits of the two are in are in line, right. yes, it's only about three minutes, but it can take up to like twenty mm -hmm. some minutes. Um, so these are seconds. I just converted that to seconds about the same range, and we set that where we want, and then we'll um, send a signal and then go. Here's the signal going to Mars, and hey! So that that was the idea. So this setup basically pressed a button for us in here, and that that was something that I'd never done before. I thought it was an interesting challenge, and um, the way that I did it, we'll just open up the controller here, uh, and I can show ya. It's a tiny person inside waiting to hear, <laughs> look, looking at that timer, and then and then flipping the switch. I wish it was that good. Um, so. Basically, all of these wires here are fed underneath, and then they're soldered onto transistors right here, um, which have three leads, one connected to this wire, and the other two go to the two contact points for each of these switches that I want to intercept and, and control. So a transistor is basically like um, a computer-controlled switch. Mm -hmm. They call it like an amplification um, component because you can amplify signals using them because right. you send a tiny little impulse and that connects the circuit for the higher you know, current signal to pass through. Essentially what we did where we're faking the circuit board and thinking that these buttons are being pressed by using transistors. So there's a bunch of these in here um, that are all soldered onto the underside of the circuit board. 
and got it all to fit within the chassis. Yeah, thank goodness there was some space down here because they didn't have any rumble. Yeah. You know, in in the otherwise it would have been trouble. But um, yep. Uh, you know, so soldered on the transistor, got some uh, shrink tube mm -hmm. all on there to keep everything. Uh, insulated. Um, I'd remove that, but it's not really necessary. Um, but yeah, that was that's basically it. it was, I've never messed with transistors before, but it was the perfect solution to this problem. And if these had been analog controls, it wouldn't have worked that way. Right. We'd I would have had to find a way to actually send analog signals. Yeah. And I also I couldn't ground like these button pins. I was hoping that the chip in here, just when you pressed a button, it would like ground a certain pin on the on the processor. Yeah. That wasn't the case. The the chip had a bunch of pins that were all kind of multiplexed, so it depended which two pins were connected. Like the the different buttons used the same pins in a funky way, so I had to like complete its circuit. So anyway, I had to do that. Now the implementation you use was to introduce a delay. Yeah, that was the thing we wanted to simulate. But because you're basically activating the same controls through the Arduino, mm -hmm. you could apply this and just program a series of commands on a computer and, yeah. not, and, and, and not use the remote control at all. Yeah, that was that's what they have to do when they send signals to Mars, because yeah. they can't, if they just sent one single command and waited for that feedback, they would be up there for months before they even moved 10 feet. I love this you know? idea that you can then reprogram your toys to give it computer instructions. Yeah as opposed to a physical instruction, right. but tap into that same physical connection. Mm -hmm. The tricky part was, this has no way of detecting how far it's moved. So when I say rotate this arm you know, 90 degrees clockwise, I just have to send that signal for what you think? What is, I think yeah. is going to be ninety degrees, you know. So I did a lot of testing to to find out how many milliseconds of signal it needed in order to rotate or move a forward a foot or things like that. So I mean, it's certainly kind of like a proof of concept kind of hack experience. Well, it's, so it's, it's not NASA ready. <laughs> it's it's a fun and clever hack. Yeah. Is this something that you're going to provide any documentation or share uh, information if someone wants to take apart their toys and control with their Arduino? I, I'd be more than happy to help out. Just uh, I'm not going to write a website blog or anything about that, but if you want to tweet me, I'm at Jareware on Twitter. Twitter. I'm at Jerry on Twitter, and I'd be happy to, you know, give you some feedback. Well, awesome. Thanks so much for bringing uh, the excavator back onto the tested set from our as seen at our live show. That yeah. whole sequence is on our YouTube channel as well. So please be sure to check that out. Thank you, Jeremy. Thanks for asking me to do this because I actually I learned a lot about transistors. First time I ever made a little piezo buzzer. I don't mm -hmm. know if you can hear that, but I see it. Yeah, it's a, you know, it makes a pretty cool sound. So it was a fun experience. I learned a lot. And it's a lot of very fun as well. And we'll see you next time on our YouTube channel and on test.com. Until next time, that's Jeremy. I'm Norm. Bye.